And yeah. we all know how easy it is to control elections with uh, this electronic voting. And uh, after uh, this uh, this election, she apparently just keep kept pursuing her course, and they killed her, is what I see. And it's funny, Dan, because there's all kinds of contradictions here. I mean, you know, it's when you read the original article, they talked to the senator, a senator named Don Thomas, who was a physician, and he said he knew the couple well, and that he believed Bruce Schaefer, 74, had cancer. And right. then, you know, in today's article, they're saying that there's no evidence that he had cancer, and they had financial problems. So right. these people are just grasping, you know, to cover this thing up. Absolutely. And you know, you know from from investigating things like this uh, that this is what they do. They 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 just come up and, of course, they they own the media, so they can they can you know allow anything to be written or or said in the media. And not only that, but every article that's been written by any major news source, not one of those articles contained anything about Nancy Schaefer revealing child kidnapping, rape. And, and so on. They, they did not talk at all about her involvement with that. And actually, um, the young the uh, young lady who came on my program, Sheridan, uh, uh-huh. she actually read a, a handwritten note that Nancy had sent her in the mail three days before Nancy uh, was killed, was murdered. And in that note, Nancy was Schaefer said that she was actually resigning as the president of Georgia Eagle Forum, and she was moving to a national position as director of parents' rights for Eagle Forum. So she was planning on on uh, going nationally, and uh, Nancy Schaefer was also in fear for her life. She had uh, was invited to come and speak in July in D.C., and she had made a request. That, that in the hotel room that she was going to be staying in, that both sides of that hotel room contained security uh, personnel to protect her. Now, now you know, most people would think, okay, we're just going to have, like, security with us and they'll stay in the room next to us. No, she wanted both sides of her room covered by security. Um, wow. And, and she was also using um, uh, phones uh, that were untraceable. Nancy Schaefer was to communicate with people and tell them to come and to be interviewed for the uh, for the uh, documentary. She was using she would like use a phone that was untraceable or was a phone like a, I guess a, like a throwaway phone or something. You know where you buy the minutes and mm-hmm. and um, it's not connected to your name or something like that. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that way, because she wouldn't use her own her own personal phone because she didn't want anyone. She she was uh, I believe of course why would you do that because you think somebody's is tapping your lines right um, and we know how and we know how easy the government has you know because of, because of laws like the Patriot Act how easily they can tap your lines and and um, and uh, your computer there, there is no security by the way in this country you don't we have no right. security right. they know everything, everything about goes. any of it. Well, you know, this is interesting because when you when you take a look at this, of all the people that they could have interviewed, they went to a fellow senator who happened to be a physician. I mean, you know, if this was legitimate journalism, they would have went to the family physician and asked him, you know, right. what's going on with this. Right. They could have gone to the coroner who did the autopsy and asked him, you know what I'm saying? Right. Well, that's really interesting that you bring that up, Paul, because I have to say that, you know, We've been reading the um, going through the Georgia laws, and of course, um, you know, you know, we're we're, we're trying to use a, a law like the Freedom of Information Act to get some information about her. But of course, they have a stipulation in the Georgia, Georgia law when any time there's a, a homicide or a, a murder or any kind of a crime like this, that they can basically bury the files or uh, make them inaccessible to the general public. So yeah. we can't go, you know. You know who, um, I'm sure you do, I'm sure you knew who, uh, uh, FBI, former FBI agent, um, uh, how could I forget his name? I apologize. <laughs> I hope he's not okay. listening. Um, Just tell me what he did. <laughs> he's, he's a former FBI uh, director of the Los Angeles office. He was really big in, in the 90s exposing the Clinton uh, mm-hmm. crime uh, syndicate. Mm-hmm. And... Um, his name will come to me in, in a minute. I apologize. But I, t- I spoke with him the other day on the phone, and he offered to reconstruct the crime scene. He offered to 
to investigate this and help us, you know, take a look into this. And nice. uh, I have to tell you that uh, that was really exciting. But the, but the problem is how are we going to get the information? The only way we can really get the information is from the family. Now, well, the thing about this is there's, you know, and this is, this is where, to me, it really gets frustrating. There are police officers that were involved in this investigation that were told what to do and where to look. It's, it's right. very likely, you know, that this is a professional hit, and they're going to clean up the crime scene, you know, right after yeah. it's over. The, the newspaper is, you know, they came out and they said, first it was he shot her in the back, and then in the article today they're saying they don't know who shot who. And that tells me that they didn't find any powder burns in either one of their hands. I mean, this is all common sense. And right. as a result, they're trying to say, well, we don't know who shot who. Well, bottom line is she was shot in the back. Right. I mean, people don't go around and commit suicide by shooting themselves in the back. Now, by the way, that FBI, former FBI agent was uh, Ted Gunderson. Mm -hmm. and, um, uh, but you're, you're absolutely correct. The story kept changing. Uh, we, we've heard, and now this is hearsay, so I'm not going to say this is true or not, but this is like some of the information we're getting. That there, you know, the, the uh, Georgia Bureau of Investigation was called in. Now, we're wondering why they were called into this. But they were mm -hmm. called in, and um, the first thing that the GBI did was they contacted the filmmaker, a gentleman out of Tennessee, who was mm -hmm. interviewed on Alex Jones. Now, here I am in touch with, um, with Sheridan, and I'm not going to give Sheridan's last name because she doesn't want me to use her last name, so I, I'm, I'm definitely going to honor that. Absolutely. Sheridan uh, was interviewed on my program. She was like the first person to come forward that was near she, uh, Nancy say anything about this and um, she had been in touch with the filmmaker and um, all of a sudden the next day on Thursday this filmmaker is on a producer is on Alex Jones and, and now the filmmaker told Sheridan when they were talking in a private conversation on the phone and, and, and Sheridan did say this on my program in front of everyone go ahead finish the thought that you uh, you were um, you're going before the break Yes, I was uh, talking about um, the fact that this filmmaker had had mentioned to Sheridan on the phone that um, he didn't want to believe it. It was everything was looking like it was a murder, the, you know, that it was a double murder instead of a murder suicide. And then all of a sudden he magically appears on on Alex Jones the next day, and he's telling everyone that there's no doubt in his mind that this is a suicide murder that. He did. Uh, her husband Neil did kill her. Did did shoot Nancy Schaefer and then killed himself. Um, <laughs> yeah. Well, he didn't want to be the next suicide, is what it sounds like to me. Well, it sounds the same way to us. And now we're really concerned about what's going to happen to the integrity of the documentary. I mean, obviously he can. Um, you know, it's. it's I'm surprised, of, Alec. I mean, I'm not surprised, obviously, but that's pretty intriguing that uh, that he had that interview on Alex Jones' show. But getting back no to this for. This film producer saying it was murder suicide. I mean, what do you think that is? What's what's going to happen with the film that he was working on? Well, I, I have to tell you, you know, um, I I personally believe the film is going to be compromised. I think that Nancy, this this lady that I've been talking with, uh, Sheridan, and we've become very good friends, by the way, and I'm going to be meeting her soon. Um, we, uh, she said to me that she believes. And, you know, she, this, this woman is very careful about what she says uh, because mm -hmm. she doesn't want to spread anything that isn't true or say anything mm -hmm. that might not be true. Uh, she said, now, although I've never seen it, I believe that Nancy Schaefer did have her in her possession a list of people, um, high-ranking government officials, that would have been a smoking gun um, and, and would have blown the... Uh, the doors wide open on these on and demanded screened investigation, sort of like it did during the Franklin cover up, of course, with the uh, with the decant memo. But but um, what happened there was, of course, what did they do in, in the Franklin cover up? All these kids had been abused and raped by the police chief, by the mm -hmm. leading, uh, by the wealthiest guys in town. Um, mm -hmm. I mean. You know, and and, and well, it went beyond there, as you know. I mean, we're talking; it was national political figures. Well, oh yeah, and that, yeah, and then they were then they were sent to D.C. to so that yes. you know they were they even went on tours of the White House, and I do remember that. And then, uh, of course, um, 
the camp's close friend, the former chief of the CIA, all of a sudden, I remember this also very clearly when he all of a sudden supposedly fell out of his canoe and, and yeah. they found him days later dead. One of the things I told you when we talked on the phone is, is that I've just recently joined the Constitution Party. I mean, yes, I, and- I'm... I'm convinced that, you know, both of the major parties, Republicans and Democrats, both have to go because this is a national problem, and so are, the, so are both of these national parties. So right. tell us a little bit about the Constitution Party and what you guys stand for and everything along that lines. Well, we stand absolutely for states' rights. We stand for the Constitution. Um, we believe that our, our all of our elected servants, and I do call them servants because that's exactly mm-hmm. what they are, uh, should honor their oath of office, and when they don't, they sh- we should have the ability to throw them out of office. And um, we, st- we are 100 percent um, for parents' rights, states' rights. Um, we're absolutely uh, that the people are the sovereign. We are the sovereign, not our government. And that mm-hmm. um, uh, we should end the Federal Reserve. We should end the IR Internal Revenue Service. There should be no graduated income tax. Um, and that we should. I'll go back to constitutional lawful money. The one, the one thing that the Constitution Party does in our in our platform, and we state it, you know, we give um, right off the bat in our party platform, we give um, our gratitude and we give honor to God, our Creator. That's one thing that we do that's different than the libertarians. Um, we're, we believe that uh, that we need to be in submission for God, that God's in charge of all things, and that we need to make that statement um, and get back to. Uh, to uh, uh, honoring his will and his laws, because right now we're violating the natural laws our forefathers wrote about, Jefferson wrote about, that natural law. Mm-hmm. Um, we're violating that. And oh, that's what's why the rule of law, which, is, which the rule of law has been totally decimated. I mean, here you have an, a woman whose daughter was raped, uh, who yes. ended up having to give her daughter back to the perpetrator. And yes. This, this is what we live in today. Is we're living, you know, what they ruled about. What they, what the founding fathers wanted more than anything else was the rule of law, that everybody would be subject to the same laws. Didn't matter whether you were the president of the United States or whether you were, you know, a street sweeper. Everybody had the same protection under the law. And this is what's yeah. been taken away from us by these, um, by these psychopaths. These satanic psychopaths have taken this away from us. Absolutely. So Absolutely. what I'm getting at, Dan, is for me, if you're gonna if you're looking for a legitimate alternative to what's there, then you need to look at, you know, the third, these third-party movements. You need to look at uh, the Constitution Party, the Libertarian Party. Uh, the point is, is that you, we need to start from the bottom up. Change is not going to come from the top down. It's going to come from the bottom up. We're, talk, we're talking about child molestation. Not just that, but you know, the, the, the things that I've written about. Uh, we're talking about satanic ritual sacrifices. We're talking yeah. about, uh, you know, what was reported about um, the uh, Grove. Uh, Tales of Bohemian Grove? Yeah. What, what was written about Bohemian Grove is, is, is not anywhere near the truth of what actually takes place there. Right. And, you know, they, these people, they, they, they view us all as their property. I mean, we, they, they think they own us. Yeah, and that they, they have do. The, they have the right to take our kids away from us and, and abuse them sexually, and then murder them, and murder yeah. them. And, that, and that's you know, the other part of it. What you said, yeah, what you said about the uh, ritual sacrifice. You see, this is this is a part of it that no one wants to talk about. Okay, you know, there is child abuse and there is problems and this and that, but don't talk about child ritual sacrifice. That that's way beyond anything I can handle. Well, they're counting on you at reacting that way. Mm-hmm. They, they, they know that it's it's so out there that you would never believe it because they've so thoroughly brainwashed, or I should say, brain soiled us into believing a certain way, to thinking a certain way through the entire indoctrination that they've given us from the moment we were born to the you know to our our present age or to the day we die through through all the the media, through the television, through the radio, through entertainment. Damn. Dan, yeah. it's time we it's time to start another movement here in the United yeah. States. What do you think? Let's get one going, my friend. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm going to have you back on the show. I'll be in touch with you, Paul. That would be great. And uh, you know, for our listeners here, uh, you haven't heard the end. This is just the beginning, and there's going to be many, many articles that are going to come out about this. And Dan, uh, obviously, you and I have agreed to work together on this in any way we can. And I just want to thank you for being on my show today. 
Well, thank you for inviting me. I appreciate it, and um, God bless you, Paul. Thanks, Dan. Okay, so there you heard it. What's going on? I mean, we're talking about a good a good politician that stood up and uh, tried to expose this evil, and she was murdered. Now, I've got to tell you something. There's a lot less worthy cause you can give your life for than this. And, you know, email me, pdrockton.com, if you want to do something about this. <laughs>